Hi and welcome back to our series on the Thai Health System. In this video we're going to look at the Thai Health Service Delivery System. Throughout this video we'll be looking at the ownership and distribution of the health infrastructure and workforce, the hierarchical organization of the public health care delivery system, the role of private health care delivery in Thailand, and the key players in public health services. Let's start by looking at the health infrastructure in Thailand. Overall, we can identify more than 35,000 sites that provide some form of healthcare services in Thailand. Now I'm going to use round numbers here since they do change from year to year. But when we do that, we can see that the vast majority of healthcare sites are primary healthcare providers. There are more than 25,000 private primary care sites. These private primary care units are split nearly equally between medical clinics and pharmacies. Medical clinics are generally health clinics run by medical doctors offering specific services. So, for example, an obstetrician may have a fertility clinic, a surgeon may have a cosmetic surgery clinic, a pediat pediatrician may have a pediatric clinic, and a dermatologist may have a beauty clinic. As primary care clinics, they're most commonly providing services such as diagnosis, follow-up, medicine distribution, or minor outpatient procedures. They're also commonly, but not always, run by doctors that work in the public sector, and then they moonlight privately. What that means is they have their so-called 9-to-5 job at the public hospital and then operate in a clinic in the evenings and weekends. Pharmacies are quite ubiquitous and must be run by a licensed pharmacist. In both cases, these private clinics provide an avenue for doctors and pharmacists to earn substantial income beyond their base salaries. Especially for doctors, most of which work in the public sector, this source of income is substantial and allows doctors to be one of the highest earning and highly respected occupations in Thailand. Thailand also has nearly 10,000 so-called health promoting hospitals or HPHs, which I'll talk more about in a few minutes. Um, these are primary care units located all over Thailand and they have complete geographical coverage. They're owned by the Ministry of Public Health, or in some cases, the local government. When we look at hospitals, which are health facilities that have beds for inpatient services, most hospitals are public. Again, for the public health infrastructure, Thailand has complete geographical coverage with a public hospital in every district. And there are around 400 private hospitals in Thailand, with the majority located in major cities, uh, with many in and around Bangkok. Looking at hospital beds, we can see that the Ministry of Public Health, which is the main public health care provider in Thailand, has consistently maintained about 70% of all hospital beds in the country. When we include other governmental institutions, such as military hospitals or other state agencies, we see that the Thai government is the primary health care provider with around 80% of all hospital beds. So let's take a look at how that public health care delivery system is organized. The organization of the public health care infrastructure is tightly organized around the administrative organization of the country. Now, as a quick refresher, the entire country is divided into about 77 provinces. Each province is then divided into districts, and each district is divided into subdistricts. Then, within each subdistrict, there are villages or communities. So, starting at the village level, we're talking about around 300 to 1,000 people in a village. Almost every village has a suksala, or health center. And this is particularly true in rural areas, but not very relevant in urban areas or major cities. And this health center is not a staffed place. It's going to look something like this. It's basically a meeting place where health staff from outside the village can hold events, such as diabetes screenings or giving out health education. At the village level, the key healthcare personnel are the village health volunteers and the pharmacists. Village health volunteers, or VHVs, are community health volunteers, are critical to Thailand's primary health care. VHVs are people who live in a village, typically older than 60, who volunteer and receive a small monthly stipend of around 1,000 baht. Their job is to look after around 10 households in the village, and they might check in on those households from time to time and encourage them to get medical services if they have a problem. They also are critical for recording health statistics, like births or deaths, and for helping implement health promotion activities that are organized at the subdistrict level. 
And as residents and neighbors of the community, it's very natural for them to do these things. When we move up a little, we get to the subdistrict. A subdistrict generally has around 5,000 people in it. And at every subdistrict across Thailand, there's a health promoting hospital or HPH. So that means there's more than 9,700 HPHs in Thailand. But don't let the name fool you, it's not a hospital. There are no beds and no inpatient services. It's a primary health care unit focused on community services. An HPH typically has a handful of full-time staff, which might be nurses, sanitarians, admin staff, or dentists. The building might look something like this. In fact, almost all HPHs have the same layout like this one. The primary duties of an HPH include screening for diseases, some basic diagnoses, immunizations, and first aid. But their duties also include community outreach, such as giving education or organizing programs, such as those to improve the health and well-being of the elderly. Moving up another level, we get to the district, and each district will have a community hospital. The community hospital or district hospital might look something like this. This is a true hospital with maybe around 100 beds. These district hospitals tend to have general practitioners or GPs and outpatient clinics, such as diabetes clinic and special wards such as a TB ward. The specific clinics and wards may vary depending on the needs of that particular subdistrict. With a district or community hospital in every district, there are nearly 700 or more than 700 of these hospitals all across Thailand. For rural areas, it's the only source of secondary health care within a reasonable distance. One of the key steps that allowed Thailand's health system to be effective and allow for the successful rollout of universal health coverage in 2001 was the expansion of the district health system in the 1970s and beyond. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Thailand was putting substantial effort into building health infrastructure at the district level, ensuring secondary care was available within a short distance to every Thai person. Coming back to the hierarchical system, we go next to the provincial level. A province in Thailand generally has around a million or so people. Every province has a provincial hospital, and it will be quite large, such as this one. And these hospitals are full general hospitals, typically having trauma centers, operating rooms, specialized doctors, and so on. And when a patient requires these services, he or she is usually referred to the provincial hospital up from the district hospital. And there are about 67 provincial hospitals. Uh, the reason why this number is less than the number of provinces is because some provinces serve as the headquarters for health regions. And as such, that provincial hospital there serves as the regional hospital. As you can see here, there are 13 health regions across Thailand. As an example, Khan Gan is within health region 7. Khan Gan is also the main center for that region, therefore Khan Gan Hospital is actually the regional hospital for this region 7, covering a total of 4 provinces. And there's somewhere around 25 super tertiary level hospitals, which include the regional hospitals I just talked about, as well as some university hospitals. And these regional and super tertiary hospitals provide specialized care, such as cancer treatments or heart surgeries. As such, patients will be referred up to this hospital when necessary. For example, you might imagine a diabetes patient that's regularly seeing her doctor uh, at her local district hospital when on one visit she has problems with her eyes. She might get referred to an eye specialist at a provincial hospital. Then, according to the diagnosis, the eye specialist might recommend a cataract surgery that's available at the regional hospital, so she might go to receive her surgery there. So, as a recap, the public health care delivery system is hierarchically organized such that increasingly higher levels of care are found at increasingly larger administrative levels. At the province, you'll find tertiary care, at the district, secondary, and at the subdistrict and village level, you'll find primary care. The types of hospitals are regional, at the province, uh, community or district hospitals, and then HPHs at the subdistrict, and then we have VHVs. Actually, all levels of hospital provide primary care. Even regional hospitals will provide primary care to the local people in that, around there. However, as you can see with this curve, the bulk of the care is curative and rehabilitative at that level, while the proportion of promotion and prevention will increase as you go down to the lower levels, such as at the HPH, which will provide primarily the promotion and prevention. 
So let's shift gears and talk about the private healthcare delivery system. Here we're looking at private hospitals. The number of private hospitals has been growing and increasing over the years and there are somewhere around 40,000 private hospital beds and that's in uh, more than 300 hospitals across Thailand. Most private hospitals tend to be medium-sized, uh, which we'll define as 31 to 250 hospital beds. So what are people doing at these private hospitals? Well, the private hospitals provide an alternative for those who wish to pay out of pocket or purchase voluntary private health insurance. Big services for these private hospitals include providing diagnostics such as x-rays or tests. A big reason to do this is faster service. Public hospitals will have long queues while a private hospital can generally be walked into. As well, patients can order their own tests while a public hospital requires doctors to follow certain protocols. Another big reason patients choose to go to private hospitals is for pediatric services. Kids are always really important to parents, so to have higher quality experience is worth the money for parents. Private hospitals often have large pediatric units. Similarly, patients often opt to birth at private hospitals if they can afford it. Private hospitals can offer private rooms and better nursery services. Another reason might be elective surgery, such as cosmetic surgery, because these services can be offered at a private hospital. Looking at clinics, the huge number of private clinics and pharmacies points to the convenience that patients prefer in the private clinics. Here, patients can go at convenient hours, such as the evening, and do their follow-ups or get prescriptions. The sources of revenue at private hospitals reflect these services. In particular, medicine and diagnostics make up about half of private hospital revenue. Contrary to what some might believe, about 93% of patients at private hospitals are Thai, not foreign. While some individual hospitals in tourist areas may cater heavily towards medical tourism, it still makes up a small portion of overall private health care delivery. In my opinion, the dual private and public system is very effective in Thailand. The public health care delivery system ensures that all people have a place to receive quality health care, often at little to no cost. On the other hand, for those that can afford it, an alternative is available in the private system, lessening the burden on public providers. And the distribution of health workforce is pretty much in line with the infrastructure. About 21% of doctors work full-time in the private sector, while the remainder work in some public sector. And as I mentioned earlier, nearly all public sector doctors will also moonlight in the private sector, either by operating their own clinic or working in a private hospital outside hours. Finally, we'll talk about the last thing, uh, one last thing in this video, which is the public health services. The National Health Security Office, or NHSO, is a big player here. They provide the money for promotion and prevention services that are allocated for the entire population, receiving their money from general taxation. And they allocate money for prevention and promotion services to the contracting units for primary care, or CUPS. And that primarily makes up a district hospital or an HPH, and they also will get some money from the Ministry of Public Health. In addition, each subdistrict has a local health fund, which is also funded by the NHSO. The local health office uh, must pay the VHV stipend and fund health promotion projects at the subdistrict and village levels. Those local administrative organizations, or LAOs, which can be sub-district administrative organizations or municipalities, they run the local health fund, so they are a key player in public health as well. So, in short, the two key players for funding and administrating public health services at the local level are the district hospitals and HPHs and also the LAOs. The key actors who execute public health are the HPH and VHVs, and the key sources of funding for it is the NHSO and LAOs. The last thing I'll mention about public health service is the Thai Health Promotion Fund. Thai Health, or Sol Sol Sol, receives an earmarked sin tax on alcohol and tobacco. This tax results in Thai Health having a pretty substantial budget each year. 
They use it to create public health media, such as posters or TV ads. They also open the funding up for proposals from academic, governmental, or NGO groups to do their own health promotion activities. They have a great website, so check it out. And that's it for this video. Please check out other videos in this series on the Thai health system.